a minha família, tanta família materna. My family from my mother's side as well as my father's came from a background of poverty. Whereby, whenever there was bread, there was no butter. Whenever there was butter, there was no bread. I grew up with my mom saying that she never wanted a girl because girls suffer too much. My name is Katia Amarante. I am 48 years old. At the age of six, I began to understand that I was not desired, in addition to the arguments at home. My dad was admitted into the military police. He was a fireman. What's interesting is that when he was on duty, he would not have a single drop of alcohol. However, when he was off duty, I believe his problems and needs would come to him and he would drink. There were times when my dad would come home drunk and in uniform, falling down the stairs. He would stumble around. This was very humiliating because in addition to being his child and black, my dad would drink and we were poor. People would throw parties and it was very humiliating. They would not invite us, either because we didn't have clothes or presents to give. When they did invite us, it was out of pity. Did you invite the black fireman's children? It was very sad. It was very humiliating. Many times when we had no food, I would pack my school bag with plastic food containers in order to fill them with soup to take back home for my brother and mother to eat. What is interesting is that we came from a religious family. My maternal grandparents were Christian. However, my grandmother also had a very poor life. Therefore, if I didn't have support at home, how would I be able to overcome in the world? I grew up hearing no, no, no. I began feeling like an ugly woman. I thought that I was ugly, with an ugly body and face. I thought that I was sad to the point of having an imaginary friend. My maternal grandmother was a local healer and was part of an entity. Whenever they were having the feast of Cosmas and Damien or religious feasts for children in the city center, I would play with people who, in my mind, were people who had the spirits of children. They would call themselves Little John or Little Mary. I would play with them by having popcorn showers and eating sweets. During one of these games, one of them began telling me my life. He said, do you want to be my friend for the rest of my life? With that, we made a pact. From then on, I began having an imaginary friend. I would see him and speak to him. I would become very ill. My face would swell up after I began having this imaginary friend. My lips would swell up as well as my eyes. I had bruises as if I'd been beaten up by someone. My mom would take me to the hospital and I would get examined, but the doctor would say there was nothing wrong. And truly, there was nothing wrong with me. With that, a neighbor saw us going through so much suffering and said, it's not fair to have the life that you have. I found a church in which people change their lives. I said, but my grandmother is an evangelical. She said, but this one is different. I said, okay, let's go. And I went with her. She took me on a Friday. When I went there, I didn't like it to be sincere. However, God is so wonderful that when he calls us, he calls us and there is no way back. We might say no, but he says yes. My dad fell ill. When he arrived in the military hospital, he went into a coma as soon as he was admitted. In the six months he was in a coma, we hit rock bottom. My mother didn't have a joint account with him. It was all individual accounts. His payment would come in and we were unable to access it. We had no means of withdrawing it. With this, we began going through hardship. We began delaying bill payments. That was when I went back to church. There, I met a man of God who began to follow up on us. He visited our house. He brought basic food baskets for us. For three months, the church supported us with food. Then we began to take it seriously. We began doing the chain of prayer for healing. In the path towards healing, I became religious because I wanted to see my dad healed. I just wanted him to be healed. However, I was not healed. I still held on to the things of my past. At the same time, I wanted blessings, wealth, jobs. I wanted a lot of things, but I didn't want an encounter with God. There were things that I needed to change. I hadn't changed yet. Despite the fact that I was taking care of my dad, I held a great sadness due to the way he treated the family. I would begin making comparisons with other fathers. 
I blamed him, saying that he was evil. For me, that was his way. He was evil. During that time, we were seeking. Everything they taught us to do, we would do. We would take clothes, oil, and consecrate shoes, socks. If we had to be there at 3 a.m., I was ready for it. However, I wouldn't change. When I was 18, I had been five or six years in the church. I was around 17 to 18 when I began to pay more attention. I saw my dad on the brink of death in a coma and began paying more attention to the meeting of the Holy Spirit. On the day of the meeting, they spoke about life in the soul and that we all have a determined amount of time in the world. We are born, grow up, and some people don't even get old. Are you prepared because your flesh will die one day? With this, my dad was in hospital, and I thought, but where will my dad's soul go? In that same message, the pastor said, a person will never have an encounter with God if they don't let go of their hatred, grudge, bitterness, resentment, if they are not born again. I began to get worried about where my dad's soul would go. I visited him that same week. There, the doctor left the room and my mum went out to speak to the doctor. I was left alone with my dad. My dad was completely intubated and in a coma. That was when I decided to hold his hand. And with everything that I heard from the altar that day, I said, Dad, if you hold any resentment against anyone, against your father who abandoned you, forgive him. Just as I also ask you for forgiveness. I want God to have mercy on your soul because your flesh is going, but not your soul. Your soul is eternal. Ask for forgiveness, Dad. Accept Jesus. After I had said that, he squeezed my hand. Then a tear fell from his eye. I ran to the church and asked the pastor to visit my dad. The pastor went and baptized my dad with a glass of water, even in a coma. He asked if my dad accepted Jesus as his savior. My dad squeezed the pastor's hand and I believed that he found Jesus. In that same week, my dad died. Then I began to pay more attention to the preaching. There was a preaching about Job, saying that Job knew God by hearing alone. I stopped looking at it as a story and began to see it as a life which was like mine i said lord i want to know you as well i don't want to know you because a pastor preaches about you or because a friend of mine talks about you i want to know you how can i know you as i was seeking the holy spirit the campaign of israel came i began to understand what going to the altar meant that was when i said lord i know that you do not want money houses or cars you want my life so i will go to the altar this time i will go to the altar for my spiritual life. Everything I could do, I gave extra tutoring. I gave leaflets on the road and bus stops. On the day I went to the altar, I didn't have a grain of rice at home. I said, my Lord, I am depending on you. It is all or nothing. Either I go down as a transformed Katya, full of your spirit, or I will continue being a religious person, but I don't want to be religious. When I went up on the altar, I received the Holy Spirit and it was a wonderful wonderful experience. I felt an inner peace that I've never had. I didn't feel as other people say hot or cold. I didn't feel anything of the sort. It was a certainty in me because I knew that someone was with me. I was not alone anymore. The absence or lack of a father's love for being the only daughter needing protection, I never had that. However, on that day, I felt protected and guarded. My weakness left me. My sadness left me. I felt a lot more pleasure in speaking about Jesus and winning souls. I began showing my Jesus to my family. Today, I give lectures and consultation. I'm a mentor. I have clients and 90% of them are referrals. I don't go after them. One client refers me to someone else. They say, you are an accountant that is different from others. I have never seen an accountant such as yourself. Note that I didn't know how to be an accountant. Accountancy was given to me by God. Therefore, this is very gratifying because I cannot do anything myself. I can do everything through the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is in me. He never fails and I know this today.
The complexes I had in thinking that I was ugly, that my body wasn't perfect, and that I should have been born with lighter skin, I don't think like this today. Today I look in the mirror and I find myself beautiful and gorgeous. Some people even say that I'm smug. She is smug and so on. You're so full of yourself. No, I'm not full of myself. I find myself beautiful because today I have the presence of God in me and he says that I am beautiful. Today I know that my soul is important. I know that my time here is temporary. One day I will no longer be here. I don't care if I live today and die tomorrow. I don't fear death because I know where Jesus will take me. My most prized possession is the Holy Spirit. I cannot let go of him. I can lose everything. I can stay an entire day without eating, but I can't handle a second without the Holy Spirit. He is my pearl, my most prized possession.